It's take three. Matt and I are about to go live. Matt from Raw Intuition. Third time's a charm, hopefully he gets on live. We're gonna be making epic salads that actually taste good. And we wanna share with you all of our tips and tricks on how we get more whole food, plant-based foods into our daily eating pattern and how it can taste epic. So let's just keep our fingers crossed that Matt can join or that he actually can be like visible to me. Um, Cause my, my phone was not working, but stand by guys, we're going to get Matt on live here and, um, I want to let you know that the vegan health bundle is now available only through March 10th. Matt and I are both contributors in the bundle and it is over 2000 plant-based recipes plus so much more like yoga, mindfulness, organization, and beyond to help you level up your life and increase your health. And there's doctors and naturopaths and a whole bunch of health practitioners in this bundle. Okay, Matt, um, I don't know if you are on, let me see. I'm going to try to request. I don't see, yeah, he's not on yet, but um, yeah, this bundle is so exciting and Matt actually has this awesome book called The Five Star Salad Revolution and it is jam-packed with like all the tips and tricks to make salads taste good and to make salads beautiful and to just get inspired about salads because a lot of people think that like salads are like iceberg wedges with like cheese and cherry tomatoes on it and that's about it maybe a little cucumbers i don't know <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous but salads are not that way they don't have to be and they can be so gorgeous and absolutely divine and filling and they can be a meal and uh so matt and i are going to talk about that today but i think he actually messaged me hold on one second i think he's just laughing because we're having such issues with technicality um so let me see if he is on he's not on yet um yeah, so we'll just stay tuned. That's why I'm like right up here in the camera because once he comes on, I'm going to turn my camera so you can actually see me making salad. But it's like a hot mess otherwise behind me. I hope everybody's having a great Saturday. And while we are waiting for Matt to come on, again, we are both part of this amazing vegan health bundle. So if you are interested in just eating more plants, like you don't have to live a plant-based lifestyle, but if you're interested in how to make plants taste good and you want to be inspired by over 2000 recipes that are from doctors and chefs and influencers and uh, teachers, then you're gonna wanna get this bundle. But the only catch is that it is available through the 10th only of March, which is a very short amount of time uh, for you to be able to grab it. It's over $8,000 worth of content for only 49 bucks. So you're going to want to get it when you can. Um, let me see if Matt is on. It only looks like five of you are on right now and Matt is still not on. I don't know what is happening. <laughs> we will get this figured out eventually. Um, but yeah, I contributed to the bundle two different things. One is actually not about food. It's about how to level up your financial health, uh, learning how to brand yourself as a holistic entrepreneur. So if you're in the health and wellness space of any kind, um, I have a fun little video course to help you kind of just figure out how to brand yourself and how to show up in a way that is impactful and can help people uh, thrive and not just survive. And then also help you thrive financially so that you create more of an income stream. And then I also have another course with Dr. Steph Peacock. She is a chiropractor and I am a nutritionist and we came together to create Mystery Illnesses, which is a mini video course on how to basically detox your liver and some recipes to support you. Um, Kim says, this is coming at the right time as my husband had a heart attack last Monday. Oh my gosh, friend, I am so sorry. Please, yes, get in on the plants. They can be, and like they can 100% be so life saving and so life changing. I have not, I, I've told, I cannot tell you how many people I have um, helped, whether they're my clients or um, also people who are just that I know of that have reversed their heart disease um, through whole food, plant based eating. So, Matt is finally on, you guys. He requested to join. Keep your fingers crossed that this time we can see him. Um, um, sorry, I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, there, there it is. There it is. Oh my god, can you see me? I can see you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Thanks.
I was just on here chatting for like five minutes. I'm like, he's not even going to be able to come on. Like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, no, Oh my sorry. gosh, he made it. Yeah, I, I didn't see you join. So. Oh, no worries, you guys. We are, I am going to go behind my chopping board now. I'm going to get my little thing to go whoop, down a little bit. I might cut my head off when I get back there, but we'll see. Uh, so Matt, my, my somebody... tripod just broke, so I'm oh. my camera right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay. This is why, as content creators, we need like five tripods. We need like one yeah. in every room. I mean, seriously, yeah. right? I'm sorry. Did it just break? Like, literally, is that what you were laughing at when you messaged me? Yes. Well, yeah, I was trying All to set I it up and it, 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 the leg snapped. So, oh, my God. Yeah, it's, it's one of these <laughs> oct octopus ones. It's like a oh, rubber, God. it's got like three rubber legs that can, they're bendable. Right. But, it's falling apart. I've been using it for too long. I need to get a new one. It's time to, it's time to up level. Come on, yes. up level. Yes. Um, so, so Matt, on a serious note, well, first off, thank you for coming on because I got the schedule wrong. We're supposed to go live next Saturday. But, right. hey, we're going live today because we're going to tell the people about this bundle, and it's a short amount of time, yes. and they need to know the valuable resource and the life-saving information. Um, but yeah, on a more on a more serious note, actually, Kim, who was just um, said that this is coming at a perfect time. She saw the title of this video. Her husband had a heart attack last Monday. So, um, Sorry to hear so this is, this is really impactful information that we can give people, not just, you know, inspiring people to eat more plants because they taste good and we can make them taste really yummy, but also because this is life saving. This is life saving information. Information yeah. that is in this bundle and that we're going to share with you today. So um, stick around for a salad party if you um, are even able to like do any salad today, Matt. And it's okay if you can't because your tripod broke. But yeah, I, no, I, the I was supposed to go. I still have to go get groceries today, but I <laughs> did have just enough. I can make a five star salad just barely, so I'm good. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I was saying before you got on live about like uh, my contributions to the bundle and then also how you have this five-star salad revolution book that is not just recipes, but also oh, it's such a cool book. Look at that. Um, it is full of health information, which I really appreciate that you do um, at the beginning of it. And I thought it would be helpful if we could today just kind of talk to people about what you think makes the most epic salad yeah and like the steps to get there yeah definitely i mean that's that's kind of what i've been about for the last several years um you know i'm uh a raw fooder and i and i love my fruit but salads have been a staple for me the the entire time that i got in this lifestyle i was I was big into salads even before I got into this lifestyle, but it, when I got into this lifestyle, I really, you know, understood the importance of including leafy greens in the diet. And so, yeah, I, I've been eating a, maybe not exactly a five-star salad, what I call a five-star salad, and we can, we can talk about that, but I've been eating these types of salads, you know, pretty much the entire time. And I do think that's, um, you know, I think that's one of the reasons why I really have zero cravings. I, uh, you know, I've been successful on this diet, a, a raw vegan diet, a high raw re vegan diet for almost 13 years now. So yeah, I think uh, I think more people need to to learn the importance of it. And once you start eating more greens, you start to really enjoy it and, you know, just appreciate it. Yeah, it is. Um... It is vital, I find, you know, and I don't think that it's even for for just raw vegans or for plant based eaters or for carnivores. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody needs dark leafy greens because yeah. they are so mineral rich. And if you think about it, like even people out there that are um, subscribed to and living um, the carnivore lifestyle, their their animals are getting their nutrients mainly from greens right yeah um so i think it's just really important that we lean in on them more um and i just personally feel they do definitely knock my cravings and that's a good thing that you brought up matt here's a fun fact you guys 
if you start your day with greens, which I, I know that like raw, the raw food world would be like, no fruit for breakfast only. Right. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah. And do you do just fruit for breakfast? No, no I, do, I do. I always start my day with a smoothie and it always has fruit and greens. Uh, uh, okay. Well, cause there is some, there is some science out there showing us that if we start our day with greens or just if we eat greens with our meal, there are compounds in there called thylakoids yep. and they help us actually curb our sugar cravings and um, eat less, which is it's so fascinating, I find. Yep. Um, and the more greens I eat, the more satisfied I feel, which I'm like, is there this? There's actually some science to this, you know, it's not just in my head. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's, I mean, there's several factors that, you know, components of greens include, you know, even beyond the thylakoids that help to, you know, create satiation and, and just, you know, satisfy those nutrient receptors that the body is looking for uh, mm -hmm. when, you know, when we're choosing what we're going to eat. So, yeah, I mean, even, even just the benefits on the microbiome, you know, and, and the, the, short chain fatty acid production that results from, you know, feeding those bacteria uh, helps with satiation. And I mean, even just as simple as the bulk, you know, the bulk of the, mm -hmm. the fiber and, and the water and in the fruits and vegetables. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's so many reasons to eat greens. Um, but I think since people struggle so much with binging and cravings and these sorts of things, um, I've, I've, that's one of the main things I've noticed in people that I've worked with and just, you know, just observing people in online, people don't eat nearly enough greens. And if they Not did, yeah, they would, they would have so much less of those types of issues. Yes. And even me as like a plant-based eater and somebody who avoids even like maple, maple syrup and honey, um, and the the liquid sweeteners and i sweeten all my food with like dates even me like i find myself craving starchy foods like you know lots of sweet potatoes or lots of like oats and like that can be that for somebody who eats like me like that even eating too much of that can be a trigger for my past sugar binges because I lived there and I know that you like had a different lifestyle before you found this way of eating as well. And like, we both understand like how, how important the, like the balance of minerals. I think that's really what we're missing, right? Like there's nothing wrong with eating starch in my opinion. Like if people want to eat cooked beans and, and grains and that's fine. I mean like that, you know, good on you. Like that there's so many benefits and to longevity and stuff like yeah. that. Um, but I, I find that we just are simply not eating enough raw and we're not eating enough greens. And like, there's, there's just a lack of mineral balance there. And if you're not getting those minerals in the greens, your body's just going to start craving and creating all of those bacteria that only crave the, the starch and only crave the sugar. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. um, yeah, so many good, so many good things about greens. And I also think that in salads, which we're going to kind of get more into like in salads, I think that adding an abundance of herbs, there's nothing wrong with that. Ooh, look how pretty, look how pretty. Is that parsley or cilantro? Yeah, that is parsley. Er, sorry, cilantro. It's I, I've got cilantro over here too. Nice. It's a good heavy metal detoxer. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I think that like, I mean, you guys, I love making salads with like parsley. I mean, like a lot of parsley, you know, it actually tastes delicious. Like, we got to get out of the box of just iceberg lettuce, you know, yeah. and like expand a little bit. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be making a, I'm making a spin because I really have a hard time as a recipe developer myself, have a horribly hard time following anybody else's recipe. It's just absolutely ridiculous. I'm like, yeah. Oh, I'll just use that instead of that. And I'll switch, switch that for that. That's what I'm doing. But this one is from the, the like spring edition uh where a whole bunch of the collaborators came together in this bundle and they made um it's like a spring recipes book and this one is called the flower power salad and it's by rachel brown and and i think she gave this to the forks over knives magazine 
Um, and it is jam packed with a whole bunch of things, well over five things, which you say make a five star salad, five steps to get there. Um, but I have a whole bunch of modifications, but we're gonna we're gonna roll with it. So I'm gonna chop some ingredients like cucumbers and stuff that I haven't gotten chopped up yet. Uh, and if you want to go over like what makes the salad epic, like what in your opinion, like what makes it good? Did we already go over that? We didn't actually answer it. Yet. No, 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 not yet. Um, yeah. And, and I was just flipping to uh, a page in, in my book here. Um, as you were saying, it's, it's good to get away from just iceberg, you know, and just sticking to the exact same thing over and over. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I was researching for this book, how, you know, what the diversity of, of like, um, the other primates were, uh, in yeah. their diets. And so gorillas on average are eating somewhere 200 different plant foods. Uh, chimpanzees are eating roughly uh, 113 different plant foods. And this is throughout the year. Yeah. And the average yeah. human is eating about 20 different plant foods every year. So, you know, I, and, and then to research also, I went to my local grocery store and I, I counted how many different plant foods there were. And I came up with uh, about 100. So we can get pretty close to mm -hmm. the the chimps if yeah. we if we kind of vary what we're picking out from the grocery store and take advantage of all the varieties. So even though we are mm -hmm. slightly limited with you know uh, what what they're putting in the grocery stores, but mm -hmm. you can also do things like sprouting and microgreens to help diversify even further things that you won't typically find in a store. Uh, and growing your own garden, of course, you can get varieties of seeds that um, you know, that you're not going to find at the grocery store. Yeah. But when it and, and obviously Stacy knows all about that since she's a she's a farmer herself. Um, yeah. We get all the we get all the varieties. I mean, yeah. we're like growing like eight eight or ten different tomatoes this year. It's ridiculous. Wow. It's, still, cool. it's too many. I'm <laughs> like, that's too many. Too many. Too many nightshades. Come on. Right, right. Do you, do you have a favorite kind of tomato? Do what? A favorite? Yeah, favorite Black, variety? Um, there's like this golden German, like huge, massive beef steak one that I love. Um, and then there's also this one called Black Crim. Um, it's like purple. Um, so I can only imagine like the anthocyanin level in them. Um, you can find so many amazing varieties at Baker Creek Seeds. I love Baker Creek. They're awesome. Nice. They have a whole bunch of different heirlooms. Um, but yeah, there's there's many different German varieties that I actually like and they're delicious. They actually say German in like the in the title. Cool. Yeah. So um but yeah and we we grow different greens and I also love that you mentioned sprouts because sprouts are an epic way to get different variety into your gut and yeah. it, it's like the no excuse way because you can literally grow it in a in a jar like this right here like i've got, got sprouted buckwheat going up i'm making a mess got sprouted buckwheat going on over here i'm always sprouting something and um uh, it's cheap and it's easy and it literally like nobody has to have a grow light or anything you can just do it on your countertop um yeah. and the importance matt right of uh, the diversity is a, a healthy gut microbiome, like you said, which supports our immune system. And yep. it's just important that we diversify. And that's why the bundle is so good. There's like an Indian one. There's um, like an Indian cookbook. There's like another uh, Jap Japan, Japanese cookbook. Um, tons of different varieties of cooking um, and, and ethnicities. And and different flavors and different spices, even different spices you guys count yeah. as a good way to diversify your gut. So do you use a lot of spices, Matt? Um, I, I, in my dressings, I do. Right, right. Um, That's what I was yeah. thinking. I've actually been experimenting without using spices at all lately. Yeah. But yeah. in, in my book, all the dressings have spices, so you can make, you know, and, th and that's the great thing about spices. Not only 
are they nutrient rich? They're a good, great source of antioxidants and different phytochemicals, but <laughs> they, they give you the opportunity to turn, you can use the same base ingredients and use a different spice and make it a completely, you know, different type of dish, right? A different yeah. flavor. So yeah. 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 I love doing that with, with like, um, I do that all the time actually with like a mango tomato base, yeah. but then you could do a curry spice or then you could do like just a like cumin and cilantro and make it more like Mexican inspired yeah. um, or add chili powder or whatever. So lots of, lots of opportunity to diversify with spices as yeah. well. And I definitely go through phases too, where I'm like, give me all the spices. Then I'm like, I just want to keep it yeah. really plain. I don't want So, um, cool. Well, I'm chopping purple. Wait, hold on. Look, as you're, well, I know that you have no tripod because it broke, because that's our luck today. I have my uh, bowl sitting on the table so I can kind of prop my phone up here. Oh, perfect. That might work. You're just going to have to come down onto your knees and talk to us while you're chopping above with your hand above the island. That's how you're going to do it. No. Um, you, in, as one of your principles in your book, that's part of the bundle, um, to make an epic five star salad, it's how many colors? Yeah, five. So you want to aim, in my opinion, for five different colors in the salad. Okay. Right? So, so for, for mine right now, I've got the green from the cilantro. And really, you can go like different shades even, I would say. Like, because, oh. you know, kale's a little different of a shade than romaine or of other mm -hmm. greens. So you can, you know, you can kind of think of it that way. But yeah, I've got green from the cilantro. I've got purple kale that I'm going to throw in there. I've got some romaine. I've got the orange from the carrots, purple uh, onion, tomato. So, so I've got five colors. I've got red, purple, orange, green, and I mean, I guess you could kind of say white on, on part of mm -hmm. the onion. So yeah. Yeah. You know what's a fun fact? Um, my dietitian friend, told me forever ago that like one of the one of the colors of foods that that americans don't eat nearly enough of which i find very i don't even know how where this fact came from but she said that this is what she learned is white mm. people aren't eating enough white i was like how is that because lots of people are munching on those french fries let's be real exactly um, right and and right i mean like that's how most people are consuming potatoes on Yes. in the country it's via fried potatoes um but i love that like cauliflower yeah. and like the white part of leeks and and white onions like i yep. think and then like parsnips and um rutabaga and uh and da daikon radish mm -hmm. like these are all ways to get white in and speaking of daikon radish that's a cruciferous vegetable there, there you go <laughs> Got another one of your principles for a five-star salad? It is, yes. I like to encourage people to put in, even if it's just a little bit, you know, a little bit of a cruciferous vegetable to get those, you know, different phytonutrients that are in there. Um, and and really, I, of course, greens are very nutrient dilute, right? They're not going to be a very nutrient, or I mean, sorry, calorically <laughs> dilute. Yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> so... You're not going to get a lot of calories regardless of which kind of green you use, but the the more hearty, like kale or uh, even cabbage, mm -hmm. you know, they give the salad just that little bit more of a dense, heavier feeling to give, you know, a little resemblance of what people are used to when they're, you know, thinking of, you know, that feeling after they eat the meal. So you can really, right. in, you know, condense or just like in, uh, elevate the that heaviness feeling without making it like obnoxiously heavy uh, by using some of these uh, more dense greens. Yeah, it really makes a lot of sense, especially for people that are just trying to find their ideal body weight. Like that's something that I'm so passionate about. I, I'm like, should I even talk about weight loss anymore? Even though what 80% of our nation is, is struggling with um, being overweight or obese, like yeah. should I even mention losing weight anymore? Or should I just mention find your ideal body weight? Like I feel like, the, the reason why eating more, more whole plant foods is so 
easy to find your ideal body weight is because like you said matt like broccoli or these cruciferous vegetables that give a little bit more body to our salads they are calorie dilute but nutrient dense and the more nutrition the more minerals we can get in the more satisfied we're going to feel because we're getting what we need yeah. we're no longer void of nutrients we're no, no longer malnourished even if we might be overweight so many people are that are overweight are actually just malnourished they're getting too many calories and not enough uh nutrient dense foods so um another reason why to, why we should eat more salads yeah. so um i want to tell you what i have over here just before I've, i'll kind of start like layering it in a minute here but i have cool. shredded carrots like i told you this flower power salad well first off it's supposed to have uh, flowers in it and i interviewed rachel yesterday and she we were talking about edible flowers if anybody wants to do something fun this summer for their family or in their life I highly suggest that you grow some nasturtiums. Nasturtiums are the, the beautiful edi edible flowers um, that, and you can eat violets as well. I mean, that, those are edible flowers as well. Uh, but nasturtiums are so easy to make. And the seed actually looks uh, about the size of our garbanzo bean. And um, a tip, just a tip for anybody that wants to grow. I'm getting all sidetracked, hold on. A tip for anybody that wants to grow take your nasturtium seeds and do something called strat stratification you can either soak the seeds for at least 24 hours to soften the outer coating or what i like to do with my my nasturtium seeds is actually you can put them in a food processor to nick the seed um, which makes it easier to sprout or you could simply just rub it on like a piece of concrete uh, to just create more of an opening on the outer shell so that it sprouts okay but anyway, that was a nasturtium growing tip. Um, if you want to have a fun project this year, I highly suggest people try to grow their own nasturtiums because it's so fun to put these beautiful colors on your salad. Um, and it's just hilarious to think that you're eating a flower. Like every time I eat nasturtiums, I'm like, I'm eating a flower and it feels really weird. <laughs> it's I've also never, really fun. I've never done that. That's one thing I've seen people over the years doing it. And I've never, never gotten a flower to eat. You, you need a flower to eat and you know what matt i feel like you would appreciate you would be somebody that would appreciate this if you ever do you know you can't do this if you're trying to make a raw wrap because you can't make clear raw wraps if you are willing to eat a rice paper wrapper oh, yeah. um you can you can put the nasturtium so that they're facing outward when you roll the spring rolls and they look so pretty cool. um it's like extra fancy but anyway this salad that I'm making ha is supposed to have flowers on it. It doesn't have flowers, so I'm making up with it um, with orange. Instead of orange flowers, I'm doing orange carrots. Nice. I have purple cabbage here, so we're getting the cruciferous. I also have shredded uh, chopped broccoli, so we're getting double cruciferous. There you go. Um, I have cucumbers, sugar snap peas, there's cilantro, and we're gonna be making a dressing, and I'm adding uh, seeds and raisins um, well. But, okay, so we've covered, Matt, we've covered two of the principles to your five principles of making an epic salad, right? It yep. was five different colors, a cruciferous vegetable. Yep. What else? All right, so next, kind of, kind of the foundation is to have at least one pound of leafy greens. So to, to a lot of people, that sounds like a lot, but when you actually put it in the bowl, it's really not that much. I mean, to the average person, it's probably more than they're used to. There you go, right there. This is a pound of greens, you guys. Yes, and I, if I recommend- you, uh, if, if you're scared, don't get scared. Yes. <laughs> if you if you chop that even further, yeah. which I recommend people do, because yeah. when I eat boxed greens, I chop them every time because I just, it just, I think it tastes better to chop them. And it's I just better, know. easier to get it on the fork and and it's not like big leaves going in your mouth. So yeah, I, if you chop that down, it it goes down pretty significantly. So it's not like a huge, you know, amount. And if you were to go look in chronometer or fit my fitness pal or whatever, the I don't know how many calories per pound are greens. It's like maybe I don't know. I I'm probably wrong here, but maybe it's like a hundred calories or something. Maybe maybe maximum two hundred calories. It's like so small. Yeah. And the, the volume that you're getting in your tummy 
when you eat these greens is a lot, right? And I mean, I know that you would be like, there's no way I can eat all this. But like Matt said, it, I mean, you guys, these greens are mostly water. It's just water and minerals yeah. and fiber. Um, so when you chop them up, it will really be so much easier to eat. And like you said, Matt, it just tastes better because it's going to be able to, it's not going to be like a big chunk of greens in your mouth with a little dressing on the outside. It's like the dressing is going to really coat all of the little ribbons of greens uh, in your in your salad. So, and before we move on from that, this is called a Holland Mill Bowl. So anybody that is in the market for an not an overly priced, an expensive bulb that will last you forever, um, that you can make huge salads in, get this, and it comes with this really cool knife. Um, it's like a mezzaluna knife, and you just uh, roll it across all of your veggies and stuff that are in there, and you can make huge salads. And, you know, we have a family of three, and this is, like, the size that we would need just for us. <laughs> just for us. I love it. I got to get one of those. I got to get one of those. Dude, you, you need to make the investment. Like, I'm like, dude, I'm going to have a whole, I'm going to have a whole collection eventually. It's just like, it's hard to spend that money on like a piece of wood. Yeah. You know, you're like, I'm paying good money, but it's all one piece. And it's not yeah. like it's a bowl that's glued together. Yes. Um, somebody said, where can I purchase it? Go to hollandmiddlebowl.com. Um, Holland Mill Bowl. They are so good. And um, you know what? I'm going to say if you want a discount, you could probably get a discount if you add the code Chef AJ in there. Um, nice. I don't think I have my own code yet. I keep bothering them. I'm like, I'm trying to get them on my podcast. I'm like, can you come on my podcast and can I have a code? Because I want to talk about this bowl. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, a really, it's a really nice bowl. And they have all different varieties of wood. And you can get smaller or larger. I think that that's the biggest one that they, they have. Nice. Yeah. And it's so important to get, if you can get a one piece bowl or that's what we have for our cutting board too. I don't know if you can Same. see it. It's yep. a one, big one piece cutting board. It was expensive. It was like 200 and some dollars yep. for this cutting board, but it's going to last us for, you know, who knows, decades probably. So, right. Yeah. I think it's important not to be preparing your food or storing your food in um, or on surfaces that can leach or contaminate your food with, yeah. you know, whether it's formaldehyde or other wood glues and things like this. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, do you use any oil to season your or to, to like uh, cure your cutting board? Yeah. So this board came with uh, linseed oil, yeah. which is flax. So we, we use that every once in a while. I ha actually should probably do it. I haven't done it for quite a while, but, but yeah. Yeah. I, I have experimented with hemp oil, and I like how it does it. I like oh, how okay. it does that. But, yeah, the, our local cutting board dude says to use linseed oil as well. So oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but, okay, I'm going to start building this salad, nice. and I'm going to – I'm going to share with people um, also the another thing that I'm cheating on, which I think will be fun. Um, it's a fun spin on the dressing. I think in her recipe, she mentions like a way to thicken the dressing or to make it more um, like creamy. And I think that that's a really good place to add seeds in typically in your dressing. Um, to get those omegas in there. I'm going to actually use a little bit of sprouted garbanzo beans in my dressing today. Um, because I'm over here, I have like, I had two huge, or two bags of dried garbanzo beans. And there are multiple recipes in the bundle that give you, um, that, that they're actually raw. Uh, there's like a raw chickpea burger that I want to make. And you have to have sprouted sprouted garbanzo beans, so I'm doing that. And then um, I also saw Lisa talking about um, taking sprouted garbanzo beans and then freezing them and then thawing them out. I don't know if you have ever done that, Matt. Have you ever done that? No, I've, never, I've done that with broccoli and cauliflower. Um, yeah, because yeah. it like breaks down the cell walls and it makes them more soft. Yeah, it almost gives it like a cooked 
texture. Wow. Yep. So interesting. So yeah, I'm going to use a little bit of sprouted garbanzo beans in the salad to just be another part of diversifying my gut, and then also to make it a little bit creamy. I think, nice. um, and it's so it's so fun sprouting garbanzo beans because they get these little tails, and this one is like, oh, you can barely see. There's like a little tiny thing poking it. So they're so cute. Yeah, but you can let them like fully sprout. Or you, at this stage, like they're ready, like they're ready to be used. Um, but you just want to make sure that it's like, you know, sprouting at least a little bit yeah. um, before you go to eat it. You don't want to ever eat raw beans, okay? Don't do that. That won't be, that will not be fun. Um, so oh, hold on. All right, Matt, we've done three principles. We have our colors, we have our cruciferous. Yep. What was the third one that you just mentioned? I love, oh, a pound, pound of greens. Yep. A pound of greens and then the fourth one is to have at least one ideally fresh herb you want a fresh yeah. herb like cilantro or parsley or basil or dill um and then the la and, and the reason for that is really just to again different nutrient profile but also that just burst of flavor um and, and the last one is the dressing it's you want to have a homemade or a whole food dressing. So it could even be just like an avocado. You know, right. as long as it's a whole food. Um, you know, I, I like to make dressings. I actually make big batches of them that last several days. And I just yep. keep it, I uh, use a vacuum, vacuum seal mm -hmm. in my mason jar and I just, you know, make it, keep it fresh even longer that way. You don't have to, I went years without doing that. So it's not like you have to do that, but. It does make a difference. So in flavor, I yeah. I have a little hand pumper vacuum thing, and I don't use it because I'm lazy. Do you have a Do you have like a automatic like a yeah. sucking machine? Yep, I've got a a bio, it came with my Bio Chef. Uh, Your vacuum blender. Yeah, so it come, came with my vacuum blender, and then I just bought the the lids that go on mason jars separately. Yep, and I got it at. Uh, discountjuicers.com john kohler's okay. website um and the, for reason the, why, the reason why matt would do that is because it keeps the nutrients more vital and it keeps the oxygen yeah. out yes. keeps it from oxidizing yeah because that's that's one of the things of blending mm -hmm. you know you're you're pulling oxygen into the food and that you're exposing you know you're breaking open the cell walls and the more oxygen that gets in there, the more oxidation happens. And right. that's where, like, you cut an apple, it turns brown, right? That's oxidation. And it's right. the loss of nutrients. So um, yeah. if you can remove that oxygen from that blender <clears throat> as it's blending, you, you wouldn't believe the difference that it makes in taste and texture oh. and longevity of that, um, you know, substance. It, it'll last in the fridge much longer, so... I am going to have to buy myself one of the vacuum blender blenders eventually. Yeah. Um, like do you have it, a vitamin? I do. I know they have like lids. Yeah, I mean that. That's what the Bio Chef. If if you don't want to get a, a whole brand new vacuum blender, you can get just this carafe. Oh. And it goes. Oh. It works on the Vitamix base. Immediately buying immediately buying after this video yeah. is, <laughs> as long as you don't have the ascent uh version of vitamix right the one that has like, fit like, yeah it's got like that magnet sensor on it only works oh. if, uh, with the carafe for the vitamix but if you have like i've got <laughs> just, professional series i don't know oh, okay yeah i've just got i'll the check right it out i'll see i'll see if it's compatible but yeah at the, at the very least, I'm going to get those little things that go on top of the uh, the uh, the mason jars so that I can make, because I have two and a half, you know, ball jars in my refrigerator right now mm -hmm. full of dressing, full food dressing, because I use it, like, if we don't have a sauce, it's not a good thing, right. you know? Like, we need a sauce. Yeah. We need a sauce for all the things. Yes. Um, for dipping, for salad, uh, it makes the meal. So yes. yeah, I'm putting on, okay, hold on, let me see. What else do we have? Wow, this is gonna be really legit. So far I'm up at like 
well, I don't know how many different leaves are in this salad mix alone. So I'm probably at like four in just the salad mix. We got five from the cilantro, six from the cucumber, seven from the purple cabbage, eight from the broccoli, nine from the spring peas, and then and 10 plants so far without the dressing with carrots. Um, hello. hello. That's a lot. It is. <laughs> That's awesome. That's an A plus. That's a total A plus, five star salad. Um, what do you think about adding alliums? Do you, are you like a garlic and onion person? Yeah. Oh yeah, you're doing onion on your salad. The, yeah, the I, I love them. I mean, I kind of go through phases. Sometimes I'll have them, like right now, I, I pretty much have it every night on my salad. Um, and I like to put them in my dressings as well. But then there's some times where I'm just not really drawn to them. So I'll go, you know, weeks without having it too, so. Yeah, yeah. I love it how intuitively you eat i am definitely the same way yeah. um and it's so weird because i used to kind of put myself in a box uh with like and I, I don't know i just got on these like kicks where i would just eat the same thing every day and that that's there's nothing wrong with that i don't think especially if you're getting a good diversity right. but like i was doing it even if i didn't want to like even if i didn't want to even if i wasn't craving that food like i still ate it just because i was like it was a simple routine, but now I'm more like, like, well, I do not want mango this week at all. I don't even want bananas. I just want melons. So I just like lean in on the melons, you know, like, yeah, um, really listen to what's going on. For sure. Well, um, all right. So I'm going to zip this salad dressing together. Cool. Um, her ingredients are. She put baba ganoush or hummus in there, which is exactly why I thought that the sprouted chickpeas would make a good replacement. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna put a little bit of that in there. We're gonna do Dijon mustard. I love this brand. Um, people can, you guys can totally make your own like mustard by just putting some vinegar with um, mustard powder or mustard seeds. Or yeah, I mean like there's just, you can make your own or you could buy some. Uh, I like this brand called Organic Ville. It is no salt added. Nice. Um, so that's really awesome. And you can find those at Whole Foods now, I believe. So doing that, we are going to also put in, she calls for maple syrup, but I don't uh, cook with maple syrup. I cook with dates. That's sweetheart. So I'm going to put some dates in there uh, to sweeten it up. And then she also calls for white wine vinegar. If you don't want white wine vinegar, um, or if you don't have it, like me, you could use raw apple cider vinegar or just lemon juice. Um, just an acid will make it really good. Um, and then she also calls for everything but the bagel seasoning. So I was thinking here would be a good place for me to get the allium in there because I know that um, everything but the bagel seasoning, one of like the one of the flavors is definitely, I think. Well, I should say definitely, I think. I mean, do I really know or is it definitely? I don't know. I think it's pretty, it's garlic flakes, minced garlic flakes. So, um, or onion flakes. So we get that like allium, oniony, garlicky flavor. Um, I'm going to put that into the dressing. So what I'm doing to my dressing is throwing in three medjool dates. I also have some freeze dried chives. I guess that's an allium too. Um, I've got some freeze dried chives at the bottom of this blender too. I'm going to put in a little bit of those sprouted chickpeas, which will add a little bit of creaminess. Um, we're going to throw in mustard, the stone ground mustard. It calls for quite a bit. Um, and mustard can make dressings like creamy without adding any fat. Um, and then what else? Some lemon juice. Yeah, like I said, it calls for lemon juice and white wine vinegar, but if you don't have white wine vinegar, you could just do extra lemon juice. Or you could do some, maybe some orange juice or lime. Any type of acid would be good. And then to grab, I'm going to do both. I'm going to do lemon juice and raw apple cider vinegar. Um, but I have to grab the garlic, the minced garlic flakes so i'm going to throw that in the dressing too of 
of course, you could totally do raw garlic. Garlic is a natural antibiotic, which is key. So, just a fun fact. Okay, this should be good. I might need to add a little water to make it hold together. But what I should have done, guys, is like quadrupled this uh, this dressing because then I wouldn't have to make another dressing tomorrow. Right. Yeah. That's, that's one of the, the biggest things you can do, if, if especially in the beginning, if you're uh, kind of averse to the process of making a salad every night, definitely batch prepare some ingredients like the dressing or, you know, maybe some shredded carrots or whatever, shredded onion or, you know, anything that you can do a little bit of extra and then you can use the, the rest the next the next day. Totally. Totally. Yeah, Have you looked at any of the two thousand recipes in the uh, in the bundle? <laughs> Uh, to be honest, I, I haven't had a chance to yet, but I, I've skimmed through everything that's in there. And I mean, I was telling Lissa yesterday how this bundle, when, when her and Chef AJ put a bundle together, I just, I love the variety of contributors yeah. that, that come together. Um, it's really incredible. So I, I, I'm looking forward to going through everything um, once yeah. I kind of get my feet under me for I know right I, I I totally yeah and me throwing out this cooking demo on the wrong day probably didn't really help you get your feet underneath you um all right but yeah I I haven't had the time either to look because I've been so focused on um trying to get the word out about the bundle because it's such a short amount of time that people can get it yeah um but I know I have printed off multiple recipes that I want to make. And there's so many different, there's different options. There's smoothies, there's cooked foods, there's raw foods, there's salads, there's salad dressings, there's juices, there's, yeah. um, you know, like I said earlier, like all different ethnic, ethnic versions of different foods. There's sushi, there's tacos. Um, there is, is there's just so many things and there's really easy foods and then there's more difficult foods. So there's also, you know, plant culinary uh, courses. So right. there's a few culinary courses in there. So if people are really wanting to get like fancy and make some gourmet um, plant-based foods then they need to definitely check out the recipes. Yeah, for sure. This dropping is really good. I tried it. Yeah, keeping it um, like lower fat will help people also feel well. I think a lot of the times when people start eating more plant based, um, you know, maybe their body will start to crave fat because they are steering away from the standard American diet, which is super super high in fat. Right. Um, but but just giving yourself like giving yourself the avocado or the nuts and seeds, but not make, just making sure it's not all of your diet, right? Like you wanna get calories from a whole bunch of different phytonutrients to really feel satiated. Um, but feeling, keeping it lower in fat and higher in like fruits and and all the different varieties of, of colors that you can get from plants will make you just feel, it'll you know, make you feel, you know, light and, um, and energized and hydrated. I think it's so important. Nuts and seeds can be kind of dehydrating, you know, like yep. if we're just eating a whole, whole bunch of nuts and seeds, like that's that's hard on the digestive tract too. So here is my salad. My, Whoa. Like my 10 star salad, I would say. Yes. It, it's not five star, it's 10 star. You, you, um, it's so pretty and it's so good. And the dressing is like awesome. Um, 
Yeah. So we've got all the tips and tricks. Does anybody have questions? Yeah, questions. I was going to say, so when I, um, when I wash my greens off before I prepare or before I cut them up, I like to put in just a little bit of baking soda in the water. Um, just from the studies that I've looked at, that seems to be one of the most effective ways. It kind of depends on which study you look at. Some of them just say rinsing it under running water works the best, but others I've seen say baking soda works the best. So, um, so I just like to put like a half a teaspoon into my wash water mm -hmm. and, and I'm very particular about the water that I use to wash my, my food in. I know some people just run it under the sink, which is fine, but I prefer to stay away from a lot of the chemicals that are in tap water. And so we just have distilled water um, that we fill up our own jugs with. And um, it's, it's our, a home distiller, but, uh, and then we just use that and then the, the baking soda. So a little. Do you ever, do you ever have people ask you if they need to remineralize their distilled water? I do. That's like one of the main, that's, that's every time I bring up distilled water that comes up. So uh, personally, I don't think you need to uh, because I, I do think that you get your minerals from your food. And especially if you're eating a healthy whole food plant-based diet, you're getting so many minerals in your diet. If you are only eating, uh, you know, McDonald's or some other processed food for your entire diet and you're not getting really any minerals, then sure. Like, Right. Your water is an important source of minerals, I guess. But the, the problem with that, and, you know, from, from what I've learned anyways, is the body doesn't utilize inorganic minerals, right? Mm -hmm. so that's what you're going to find in, in water, mm -hmm. like in, in a lake or, you know, in your tap, it's going to have inorganic minerals. So mm -hmm. the same reason that we cannot go outside, dig up, a, a handful of dirt and eat that and get our nourishment is the same reason you don't want to get your minerals from your water because it's the exact same minerals. They need to be converted mm. into an organic mineral in an structured. organic state. What's that? Stru structured. Yes. Yeah. They need to be yeah structured in a way that your body absorbs it. So in order for it to become an organic form, it has, it has to go through the plant's uh, root system right. and get, get com combined into the plant. And that's how, that's why we eat the plants to get our nutrients and we mm -hmm. don't just go eat soil. So, you know, I think that you don't need to, but I always say just because so many people are concerned about it, I really don't care either way. Like if you want to remineralize the water, I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. Mm -hmm. I think you're fine either way. My only concern is getting out the, the poison, right? I want you to get out the contaminants that are in the water because there's so many that we don't even know about because you know thousands of new chemicals are introduced into the environment every year and none of them hardly, you know, basically none of them are safety tested. And so we don't even, they don't even regulate hardly at all what chemicals are getting into the environment until there's suddenly a problem, a big enough problem that mm -hmm. more, more people are becoming aware of and they force the regulatory agencies to, to start to regulate it. Otherwise, companies just pass it themselves. They say it's safe, they put it in the environment, and then you know, it's not until decades later when they start to find you know, that there's enough evidence to pin it on that, that they have to start you know, retracting you know, or banning yeah. it or whatever. So right. I, I don't trust any of the, you know, the tap water or even unfortunately spring waters. Yeah. Cause I know that's a big thing for people too. I just personally yeah. don't trust getting my water from, <laughs> from the environment. Anymore. I know it's so. not, it, you can't anymore. It, it, and you know, we don't drink fully. This is like a battle with my husband. So I wanted to ask you, that's why I was like, do you really think we have to remineralize? I don't think we have to remineralize our, our distilled water. And if you're worried about it, then go, go drink a greens powder or something like put some greens powder in your distilled water or something. If you're really nervous yeah. about it. Um, but, um, we get delivery 
even because I don't trust our reverse osmosis and I'm just like, I don't know. So we get delivery and it's, it's distilled and spring mix. And I'm like, I would just, I want it to just be distilled. I just want it to just be distilled. Um, but yeah, where, how do you get your distilled water? Do you go and fill it somewhere? Or? Yeah. Uh, we have two home distillers. We have a countertop model and then we have an automatic model. I can show you if you want. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, so the automatic models upstairs in my, in my closet. Cause we only use it now when we have, when we're cleaning this one. So this is okay. our, our automatic one. It, it pulls directly from the water line and, cool. and uh, it refills itself. So it's got a, a little ball nice. inside that can nice. tell when it's getting low and it's got a five gallon storage tank. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's, it's really nice. Um, yeah. Sweet. That's and, awesome. and I am an affiliate. I'm an affiliate for these machines. So. Oh well, I'll buy it if I buy if I buy one. I'll buy from you. Yeah. So so these ones are the, the automatic one is more expensive. It's it's yeah. It's like twenty. It's it's a little over two thousand dollars. So yeah. you know it's an expense. But if you use my code, you get five percent off. Well, I mean, you know. I, mean, I spend tons of money every month on our water deliver delivery anyway, and I'd rather just you know. For sure. Yeah. Um, I'd and, rather. Yeah, it's it is totally worth it. I mean, it's, it's really like any other appliance. You know, that's what I tell people. Mm -hmm. Like, you're gonna spend a couple thousand dollars on a new washer or dryer or whatever. You know, like a new fridge. Right. Like, this is just another appliance that that's protecting you, right? It's like right. it's protecting your long term health. So I think it's worth it. But there are other distillers out there. You know, if people want to get there's there's less expensive ones. I just prefer this company. I, I, I really trust them and, and like the, I, I know people that have had them for decades. So I know that it's yeah. a quality product. It's made in the U S so, um, but then there is the, um, the countertop model as well. So that, that's yeah. uh, like, I mean, it's still, it's not super cheap, but it's, uh, I can't, they keep, From I think it's the same brand. Yeah. It's okay. It's, okay. it's uh, they have, two lines actually they have like three lines okay. the countertop one i have is called a mini classic ct okay um pure water is the company that that has them but i've got them linked actually there's no link in my bio right now but typically or like under my youtube videos um yeah. i link them so if anybody wants to check them out you can yeah. use if if you want to get one it's called raw intuition to get five percent off um but Ooh. i think a distiller is totally a, a a really important investment that people should consider. Yeah. Uh, reverse yeah. osmosis, you know, I mean, it's better than nothing, but it's yeah. filtered water. Anything that uses a filter, I don't really trust because it, it, it starts losing effectiveness from day one, right? right. Like that filter is going to continue to get, you know, it's going to continue to accumulate whatever it's filtering out. And as that happens, the effectiveness goes down. Plus with RO, it, there is the chance of bacterial contamination growing in the, in the membrane. So, yeah. you know, that's why I really like distilled because there's no filter that it's going through unless you have a, a post carbon filter, but I don't, mm -hmm. I don't really consider that the same. Right. Um, and but, I, got, yeah. I, I, um, I get heartburn if I drink carbon filtered or something, anything. Is that not oh. bizarre? So weird. Yeah. Uh, anyways, we all need a distiller. We all need to get off the poison water. Yes. Uh, I'm going to get my charger because my charge, my phone is just about to die. But okay. um, somebody, asked, somebody asked Matt, what is your dressing that you, that you have? Ooh. All right. My dressing. Is, and this is actually because I told you I'm uh, – I'm kind of in a little phase right now of not using any spices. So what's in this dressing is uh, pumpkin seeds, Brazil nuts. So I, I like to do a little bit of Brazil nuts in my dressings these days, okay. uh, just the extra selenium. And so I put just like four or five Brazil nuts in there. Uh, and again, this is gonna last me for three or four days typically. And I share this with my brother as well. He lives here. Okay. And so we just kind of use the same, we just go through it and then I make a new one once we run out. But uh, yeah, 
pumpkin seeds, Brazil nuts, um, garlic, and then um, I like to use, this is the mustard that I have been using. Oh. I like that it's in glass, so. Um, it was? Oh yeah, it's in glass. I know, right? That, yeah, yeah, it's a downfall. It's, it's definitely a downfall to have a vinegary substance yeah. inside of a plastic. It's, I mean, I literally thought about it when I was using it today. I only use it for like recipe, I use it for like holidays and I'll use it for, for recipes like, like on demoing because I feel like people are gonna get scared if they're like, they have to start using mustard powder instead of. Yes. <laughs> okay, so what brand is that one? I think you and I have talked about this, but I forget which one it is. Yeah, it's, it's Natural Grocers brand. Oh, okay. I don't know if natural grocers goes as far over as because you're in. No, um, we don't have. One. Okay. We live in Indiana. We Indiana. don't have anything cool. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I don't think they go past like the Minnesota line, mm -hmm. like down yeah. to Iowa and Kansas or Missouri. Um, so let's see. Yeah, there's the a little. There's like a tablespoon of mustard in there. Um, there is the garlic, pumpkin seeds, uh, Brazil nuts and lemon and that's it it's i just throw a whole lemon i peel the lemon and i throw the whole thing in there i don't mm -hmm. squeeze the lemon juice out i just throw everything in mm -hmm. uh, and yeah then I, that's I very dr gregor of you yeah yeah is that what he does yeah in his book how not to die that's how he makes a lot of his recipes with lemon oh okay he just the whole thing goes nice. in uh, fabulous fabulous yeah so this is a five star salad. We got you guys. We hope this inspired you. Yeah. Um, this this talk is really important because again, these foods prevent cardiovascular disease, which is our number one killer, and also can help reverse many diseases in the body, like high cholesterol, high blood sugar, just high tri high triglycerides in general. Um, you know. Uh, Broaded artery plaques, things like that. We want to break all of that up with phytonutrients and fiber. It's so important, and we we feed our gut microbiome here, which means we're feeding our immune. We're we're helping to boost our immune system. Somebody asked, "What do you think about the Berkey water filter?" Um, I think it's a good filter. Again, for the same reason that I mentioned, I, I don't prefer filters in general. But if I were going to get a, a filter system, the Berkey would probably be one that I would consider. Um, yeah, I do. I do know it's it's a pretty a pretty reliable filter. So, cool. Yep. Uh, so, so yeah, we you guys we hope that this inspired you to eat more whole plant foods and to get a variety of awesome fresh food in your life and to get the bundle. Oh, that's a pretty salad. There you go. That's pretty. Uh, this recipe or these recipes, guys, and these these um you know tips and cooking cooking like inspiration can be found in the ultimate vegan health bundle here's my salad up close and personal so pretty beautiful so, so pretty you guys and I, I put some chopped walnuts on there and there's <laughs> who's that jack jack, jack. Is Jack in a bad, bad mood or is he happy right now? <laughs> uh, I, I think he might be hungry. So he's <laughs> he looks hungry. a little bit mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my yeah. God. That looks like my cat, Tulsi. Hi, Jack. <laughs> What's up, buddy? He's probably, I just cut up the onion and I know cats don't like <laughs> My cats actually like hate, they definitely hate onion and they definitely hate citrus. Yeah, um, mine too. They do not enjoy that. That's so funny. Um, all right. Well, well, do you have anything else you want to say, Matt? Or just, we hope that this was helpful, yeah. you guys. Yeah. Yeah, no, I had a great time. And thanks for having yeah. me on. And um, yeah, we should, we should, maybe next Saturday, we should still go live. I think so we, too. Yeah. We can talk I have, about I have your, like, your stuff. Oh yeah. We could go over some of my stuff. We could do like liver detox, or I could just make something fun like, um, raw tater tots that I've been like eyeing. Yeah. I might just, maybe I'll just do a raw recipe, uh, like a gourmet raw recipe. But yeah, we could oh. talk both liver detox and do a recipe demo. You guys grab the bundle. If you enjoyed this video, 
you can get more inspiration in the ultimate vegan health bundle. It is linked in both of our bios. Um, go grab it. It's only $49 for eight, that over $8,000 worth of content yeah. um, to help get you going and feeling your best. And there's just a ton of stuff in there. So at least go and check it out. Um, it's only available through March 10th. You cannot get it after that. So uh, Matt, it was fun. Maybe yeah. we'll see each other next Saturday back in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, right. and, see you guys. That's less, that's like 33 cents per product, just so you know. So. Oh my gosh, it's such a low price. Yeah, 33 I mean, cents. Yeah, 150 contributions in this bundle, you guys, like, and so many doctors in it. So, like, if you need yeah. evidence-based nutrition and you need ways to prevent disease, you will want to get a bundle. For so. sure. All right, Matt. Well, it was fun. All right. Be well. Thanks again. Take care. Bye. <laughs>